Hello my dear ones. It's always a pleasure to come to you. Always has been through all these years. All the beautiful souls I've met and all those that are getting their healings worldwide. It's incredible. This video however is to Brian Clements. And I know some of you have been trying to get Brian and me together to debate fruit sugar. And I find that interesting in that Brian, you are come from a different level of thinking than I do. Even though I'm a biochemist and naturopath, and I've had 45 years in this field. And the uh, things that I hear about fruit sugar is so bizarre, I just have to tell you. So this is about uh, my take on fruit sugar and what I've done in 45 years on fruits, berries, and melons, where fructose is high and essential. You know, there's three simple sugars, guys, in nature. You have your fructose, which is your simple fruit sugar. You have your uh, glucose, which is your simple vegetable sugar. And you have galactose, which is your simple milk sugar. And these are the three simple sugars. When you start complexing these sugars, then you start getting into dye, which is two or more. And then you get into polysaccharides. Saccharides are sugar. Sugars are the carbon side of nature, where amino acids are the nitrogen side of nature. Carbon tends to be on the base side of chemistry, and the uh, nitrogen tends to be on the acidic side of chemistry. When you start looking at the foods that have these simple sugars in them, they're base in their structures. Because base dominant food is the appropriate food for the Homo sapiens, matter of fact, for most vertebrates. So when someone claims that fruit sugar, natural fruit sugar is bad for you, these guys are probably of the intellectual variety who got lost in studies that are meaningless and have no basis in fact or truth. And you see this constantly. And I've done videos through this, these years showing the fruit sugars, are, how beneficial they are and why we win so many cases and especially neurological cases. But it is important that everyone realize that sugar is essential to life. It used to be called grape sugar. But it is important that you understand that sugar is carbon. And carbon is essential to acquiring ATP, ADP, and AMP. These are the uh, denison tries, uh, dyes, and monophosphates. These are the energy factors of cells where oxygen and carbon are combined with the hydrogen yanked out, which is the acidic side of chemistry, and now you have energy, pure energy. So it's important to understand that sugars are essential. On top of this, you must understand the different vertebrates and how man was put together. Of all the, of the four basic vertebrates, man obviously is of the frugivore varieties, a primatish, and even more refined than primates. And one might argue that some primates are omnivores, not in choice. Primates are frugivores, and many live as omnivores by choice, and the mountain gorillas have to eat the tender greens by choice. By not choice, it's just where they're pushed up and they, they live in the higher mountains. Too bad, because these are frugivores. Frugivores have a unique way of chewing, a, a digestive tract uh, that is, I would say, in the middle. And the ability, of course, ringed for maximum absorption. We do not have a high hydrochloric acid level, nor do we have a complicated digestive system whatsoever. It's important to understand in man's digestive tract, particularly in the duodenal area, that duodenal chine pH must be 7.5 to 8.5 to even have trypsin, which finishes up the protein polypeptide syndrome down to the amino acid phase but also your tylen, amylase, and all these others, activates in a base-dominant pH. Now, important to understand that herbivores are those animals that eat vegetables. And the design of a herbivore is totally different than that of a frugivore. We look totally different than a horse, a cow, and an elephant. And the reason we do is because we are of a higher level of consciousness. And these animals, even though pure consciousness in that way, are, are different in their structures, as I've said. They have a much more uh, uh, longer digestive tract. Their digestive tract is over 30 times the length of their spine. Ours is only about 12. 
Most herbivores have uh, two to seven stomachs or compartments that assist the digestive process of the fiber. You get into why man had uh, developed juice extractors, and that is to get rid of the fiber. When you're working on a case of any level, you don't want to give people vegetables because even though alive and fairly energetic, an average vegetable gives off about 9,000 angstroms of, of energy. Uh, by the time you're breaking down that, that hard to digest vegetable, and a lot of people are pushing the kales and the, and the leafy greens, which are the worst, they are very difficult to digest. And so man tends to see a lot of undigested foods in his stools, particularly when there's some compromising in the pancreatic area. Again, herbivores chew and grind. We, don't, we do not grind our food. Much different. And then it comes the omnivores. We're not nothing like a dog, hog, bear, or chicken. These are all omnivores. Most omnivores favor the veggie side, of course, or the fruit side of life. Omnivores are even more uh, restrictive in that way and more like pre-digested vegetable matter, particularly into the true carnivores that like the gut tissue because it is pre-digested vegetable matter. Has uh, no length of bowel to digest vegetable matter, a carnivore. This is why you can't, in felines and cats, you can't detoxify them in the way that you would, say, an omnivore, which you can use some vegetable matter with some omnivores. But in reality, no animals designed for vegetable matter except the herbivores. And we're not even close to a herbivore design. So in my cases, especially in the neurological cases, and I'll give you one, Brian, that we just did. And this was an advanced ALS case. Got her in at the end of April. And we do this with all our cases, however. She was advanced. She lost her ability to speak neurologically and to sing, obviously. Uh, she, of course, was bedridden, chair ridden, and her feet were turned in and her hands turned in. Advanced ALS, of course. Uh, by the time September went, uh, came around, she walked home and singing and talking. And not on vegetable matter, on fruit matter, on fructose. Very important to understand the high level of frequency of fructose and of fruits. And it is the only level that you can regenerate man's nervous system on. We never fail to get quads, paraplegics, and those sort of people out of chairs if they follow the protocols. Now, admittingly, I do use botanicals hitchhiked onto that. And there's a good reason for that. So this concept that fruit sugar feeds cancer cells is so far off point, it's not even funny. All sugar. And to argue that fructose, a natural sugar, is bad for you, but the glucose, a same inferior natural simple sugar, is better, makes no sense. Matter of fact, when you get into type 1 diabetes, where the island of Langahans, the beta cells, are no longer producing adequate amounts of insulin, you want to get off of all vegetables and all foods except fruit. When you go on all fruit as a type 1, you might glucose load for a few days, but your blood sugars will come right down and you'll be between 100 and 200 easily. Depends how brittle you are, etc., etc., but you can fix all that. Because it, fruit sugar does not require insulin. No matter what the medical records show, I can demonstrate case after case. And the reality, Brian, and all of you guys is in the cases. Are you winning your cases? And of course, in terms of the Hippocrates, we get Hippocrates cancer people in here like it's a long line from the Hippocrates to here. Good example, Brian, was a young man you had for about six months at your clinic, and a big tumor on the side of the neck came over here, and I had it completely gone in two and a half months. Vegetable matter is not a detoxifier, no astringent value to vegetable matter, too heavy of chemistry, too heavy amino acids, particularly when you want to use detoxification. The Hippocrates is supposed to be a detoxification clinic. You know, I come along with Dr. Jensen, personal friend of mine. A lot of the greats were personal friends of mine. And I can tell you, Dr. Jensen woke up one day with PSAs of 1600, Brian. And he thought, well, let's go back to the old carrot juice fast. And I've done plenty of those through the years. Yeah, realizing that, whoops, nope, no worky. Carrot juice, you don't fast on carrot juice. You don't fast on vegetable matter. Matter of fact, fasting is a water or dry fasting event in nature. However... 
The fruits have the astringence and the energetic power. Their digestive needs are so small that the yield of energy, systemic energy to the body is much higher than that of vegetables. And therefore, that's why you see the nerve regeneration so much more. I've had nerve regeneration going on in, in MS and ALS, give them vegetable matter to try to maybe build more muscle because you have that stuck in your mind about the aminos and stuff, only to have them lose their ability to move anymore. So putting them back on fruit to get that mobility and that energetic going. None of them dies from fruit sugar because fruit sugar is a natural simple source of carbon. To say that fruit sugar again feeds cancer cells, all sugar feeds cancer cells. Do we even know what cancer is, guys? You know, it's important that the public understand and you guys at Hippocrates understand what cancer is. And if you guys are living in the world of diseases, then you're living in the world of illusion. Medical doctors own the world of illusion. They've created the whole concept of diseases. There's no such thing. The world is cause and effect, period, plain and simple. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. All the greats, the Jesuses, the Buddhas of the world have taught this. So anytime you experience something, you created it, pure, plain and simple, maybe from unawareness, but you've created this. You know, remember the forks over knife syndrome? Hand to mouth, you weren't taught what foods a homo sapien is because we've become so perverted in our tastes. Young babies know and young children know. I can lay a big table of fruits and vegetables and nine out of ten children will go to the fruit before they go to the vegetables at all. They love the fruit. And we have tens of thousands of children out there being raised on fruit, academically superior to their classmates in every way, physically unbeatable. It's unbelievable what's going on out there on fruits, berries, and melons. Some of that, not, not so much the melons, but the fruits and the berries, the highest nutrition of all the, all the plant lives. And the very ones we need, the high flavonoids, just incredible powers that these fruits, the astringent value, so they can move length. And that's another thing that's vital to understand. But let's go back to understanding f sugar feeds cancer cells. All cancer is is a name for damaged cells. Well, what side of chemistry damages uh, cells? There's only two sides of chemistry, guys. Which side damages cells? We know it's the acidic side that damages cells. Vital to understand because most metabolitic waste from cells are acids. Plus all the activity we have, all this acidic sewage that is accumulated daily has to be eliminated by the body. It is not eliminated through the blood. If you believe that, then you're believing in fallacy. The blood cannot handle high acidosis or you would be dead in about, uh, about three minutes. Maybe you might live three and a half minutes. Acids have a whole other system to deal with, and this is the system that most people, even in the healthcare industry, and I even see in Hippocrates to a certain degree, is ignorant of. And that is the great lymphatic system and how it really works and what it really is. And if you follow allopathic thinking or some of these ridiculous studies, they don't take you anywhere because there's plenty of studies that what they want to use. The problem is most of these have been debunked by 60 minutes. 60 minutes took a, a segment and went through these double-blind studies and found that most of them were fallacy. No, cancer is nothing but a damaged cell. How about a tumor? Someone says, sweet sugar feeds a tumor. Feeds a tumor. What's a tumor? You know, people have to understand what these things are. You, people are touting off things and it shows how ignorant that man is. And definitely how ignorant the allopathic community is when it comes to these sort of concepts of diseases because there's no cure for diseases. And you'll never find one anywhere because it doesn't exist because they don't exist. Nature doesn't look in the world of diseases. They don't think in the world of diseases. Nature thinks in the world of chemistry and physics. And as a biochemist, we are in a world of theories, theories, theories. When you have a theory of biochemistry that your basic electrolytes, which are anions, are cations, pre-ionization, they're, they're crazy because that's not true. The periodic table pretty much explains which, which metals are base and which are acids. In the ionization process, where you have the movement of electrons, yes, then you do change the anionic nature of electrolytes, and you might move them to somewhat of a cation, but there is a saturation point to this. 
Because when you look at the human body and it becomes stagnant under the acid sky, what system are we talking about? We're not talking about the blood. Stagnation of the blood would yield death. We're talking about the stagnation of the giant lymphatic system, which is at least 60 times bigger than the lymph system. It is 80% of interstitial fluid where blood is only 20%. So when you're looking at detoxification, you're looking at the people suffering. What side of chemistry do you find the suffering on and what system in the body do you find each and every time? And when you're dealing in cancers, you're dealing in lymphomas because that's the, the message. It's the lymph system that's involved. And even though we have an international lymphologist society, these guys don't know much more than that the lymph system is to buffer blood proteins. Protein is the problem, period, and not just in the blood. The blood dumps what it doesn't want where? Into the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is the sewer system of the human body. And everyone has to get with that. And the liver is not the detoxifying organ of that system. Not even close. Matter of fact, where is the eliminative organs of the lymphatic system? We know the eliminative organs of the GI tract. Remember, our body is just a food processing machine. So food particles that are not broken down and absorbed are eliminated through the stool, correct? Correct. So what's the urine and what's the sweat? These are the eliminative organs of the gigantic sewer system. The two kidneys, the right kidney drains the right brain all the way down to the right toe and the left the left. So you've got two kidneys, two adrenal glands, and you've got a skin wrapped all the way around you. And these are the elimination organs of the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system, the sewer system, the lipid carrier system from the small bowel to the liver. This is the uh, uh, lubricating system of the synovial fluids and eye fluids. This is a lipid-based system, a cholesterol-based system. It's mucousy. That's why you see mucus when you detoxify. And if you're afraid of fruits, then you have a very unjust, unwarranted, unconscious view of the world and why God created all these fruits and for whom. We have tens and tens and tens of thousands of people worldwide that not only have got their health back from the levels that are deep, but look at the energy and look at what we're doing with the bodybuilders and look at what we're doing all around the world with a fruit, berry, and melon level. It is one of nature's most powerful levels in terms of magnetics and consciousness and also of chemistry. A good friend of mine is a three doctorate professor in Canada. He has studied foods and chemistry all his life, three doctorates. Says the banana is nature's perfect food, but gets into all the fruits, the blueberries, and shows you the power of these foods. And to have someone that wears black all the time and says that fruits and fruit sugar is bad for you, got a problem with that. Because it's untrue. And I knew Ann Wigmore personally. Quite frankly, I don't even like wheatgrass juice. Quite frankly, those of us that are chemists understand that alfalfa is far, far, far superior. Far superior. So these are some of the things that when we're arguing about uh, fructose and saying that fructose is bad for you, if someone arguing high fructose corn syrup, you're, you're talking about something that's, that's a process that's way out there. You're not talking about simple fructose sugar from a fruit, which its little buddies are glucose and galactose. And you'll see that as a combination of the two of glucose and fructose, even in some veggies. So to sit there and, 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 and talk about fructose and not about glucose, you know, when you're trying to avoid sugar and you're saying, well, fructose feeds uh, 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 cancer cells and glucose doesn't, that's insane. All sugar feeds all cells, ATP, ADP, and AMP. All sugar's carbon. But it's a moat point to say that I'm going to, uh, that I'm feeding these cancer cells and that's what's making my cancer grow. That's insane. You have to understand what's breaking down the cell in the first place. You know, when your lymph system becomes stagnant from a lack of kidney filtration and all these high protein diets have broken down our kidneys to, well, you don't filter anymore. And Brian, let me suggest that you go get yourself a jar and all your people at Hippocrates and pee in it. And if it's clear, every one of you are in trouble because your urine shouldn't be clear. This is a septic system. And we talk a lot about it here. We have pictures. We have all kinds of things to show the people of the world that your kidneys are supposed to be filtering acids out of them. <clears throat> 
and especially after your lymph nodes hopefully are still full of bacteria which breaks these three pH acids down cellular acids are three pH roughly speaking coca-cola by the time they are going through the lymph nodes hopefully they're up to about six you get two, two, two acidics uh, two acid coming out of the kidneys you'll feel that too that's why it's important to have good bacterial action in the body to bring these acids back up closer toward base so you're not on your knees peeing now this is a very important subject and you're giving a lot of misinformation over the Hippocrates and we get this all the time, a steady line of your cancer people. Nothing changed, nothing changed, the numbers going up, up, up. A fruit diet, a vegetable diet is only good so far and you'll reach plateaus and a lot of your people are reaching plateaus. You're getting expensive over there in supplements. Learn the lymph system and learn to focus. Learn to focus on the kidneys, the skin. Learn to focus on the different tissues in the body, the systems in the body that get your people well, that, that detoxify them properly. Because And use the eyes, because when you start detoxifying, you'll get changes within the eye. You'll be able to determine where people are having problems and how to get into these tissues and regenerate these tissues, because we're into regenerative detoxification. We use the doorway here of detoxification, but my goal is the regeneration of tissue, of genetic memories of cells. And it's not difficult to remember genetic weaknesses of cells. We do it all the time. To understand that, you have to have some spiritual understanding and how the worlds are put together, how creation is put together so you understand why there's memory in cells and where does this memory really come from. There's a lot to understand in that level of that. So I made this video for you, Brian, and for those that want to hear us debate. You can debate with a video of your own. We're welcome to put a video up. We'll put it up beside this one. You can take this video and put it wherever you want it. But it's enough to understand that our success is gigantic the worldwide, and we've exploded worldwide because of our successes. HIV, uh, you name it, there's nothing incurable out there. Again, using their nomenclature for diseases... But you have to understand that concept is, is an invalid concept and it's a ridiculous concept. It doesn't exist at all. And as long as you play in those field of dreams, the state's going to come after you. People are going to come after you because you're playing in the medical world. You're not playing in the naturopathic, holistic world. So it's understanding the species that the Homo sapien belongs to. Matter of fact, they found, I don't know or can't pronounce her name, sorry, I'm not that intellectual, but I, I call her Articopithecus because uh, they found her in Ethiopia about, it's going on about three years ago. And she is a bipedal, upright, walking female, uh, Homo sapien-like. They couldn't believe it. They carbon dated her 44 million years old. And it blew, blew the mind of anthropology because they had, had taken the Homo sapien to the primates 22 million years ago. And they said, you know, this is impossible because the Homo sapien is a tropical species. That's right. We're a tropical species. We're not a cave dweller. The paleo thinkers and the quave dweller, wrong. We're a tropical species. We might have migrated to northern climates, hostile environments to the Homo sapien, but we're not from these environments. We're a tropical species. And they were asking, how can this be possible that there's a, a human-like uh, bipedal female in an arid country like uh, Ethiopia? So archaeologists went and looked at this and said, oh no, 44 million years ago, Ethiopia was tropical. You have to understand why we and the primates are tropical species. The best species I can tell you of the primates is the orangutans, of course. There is a, a, an island where you have some lower monkeys, but these guys are trapped. There's no fruit hardly on the islands. So you've got to make do. But anybody thinks that fruit is bad for you has a lot of problems with their consciousness. You know, unripe fruit, there is a big difference. Unripe fruit is more acidic because the growth stages of fruits are the nitrogen stages. You pick fruit ripe. This is part of the problems. If you're judging unripe fruit, then you're making a, a misjudgment. But all sugar feeds all cells. It's carbon. But that's the moat point. A damaged cell, how do, how do you get a cancer cell? Matter of fact, how do you produce an atypical cell and then a cancer cell? How does that damage occur to that? 
Well, you must understand the lymphatic system and exactly what the cell is job is in eliminating its metabolic waste into the interstitial fluid, which the lymph fluids takes it right to the lymph vessels, right into the lymph nodes, and out you go. These are the acidic byproducts of metabolism, but all of it, from the crib cycle to methylation, you name it, all these byproducts have to be eliminated. They're not converted to other country chemistry. We're, we're not a, a, an in-house type of thing where the liver is country transmutating all this chemistry into beneficial chemistry. Difficult to change acids back to base when the diets are not involving much base. And very difficult to change an acid to a base. Things tend to be more acidic, more acidic. That's the K of life, birth, life, and death. Life is in the base dominant stage, death is in the acid dominant stage. Where kidneys fail, etc., etc. Go after the kidneys, learn the kidneys and the skin, learn the roll, skin, thyroid, kidneys, adrenals. Learn those things and go after those things. Get kidneys to filter. Kidneys don't filter, you can't get rid of tumors. And the one food source for the humans neurologically, academically, and everything else is fruits and berries, and of course the melon variety would be very good for us as well. And we've had 45 years of proving this. So it's just enough to say that the argument of fruit sugar and fruit sugar is bad for you is ridiculous. It has no basis in fact, and half the people on this planet would be dead. So it's ridiculous. And to have anybody that's at any learned position say stuff like that is just unconscionable. So it's enough to say that people have to really start pulling back a little bit from academics. Academics, Brian, is all conditioned states of thinking. All my libraries around here, and I've had many, I even have Dr. Jensen's library, and I've read most of these books, and it's just opinions and ideas of other people, other souls visiting the planet. So sometimes you have to think and, and observe and get past the, the mind part, and that's what we teach. How do you set the mind aside? Because you mind writers get lost in thoughts, and thoughts are totally conditioned states, conditioned by your, your, your academic uh, uh, schooling, uh, conditioned by your churches, conditioned by your states, uh, governments, things like this. The unconditioned state of you is consciousness, and the only way that you can learn truth is to stop thinking. Learn how to get past your mind, quit looking through the mind, get, get beyond that mind into who you really are. And then you will know the answers. Academically, uh, people are just uh, giving quotes from these studies that are bogus and have no basis in fact. And that's the problem. In this clinic, I don't like to give percentages, and we won't call it cancer because that's medical thinking. But those that have damaged cells or cells at these levels, we have a well over 90% success rate. Well over that. Stage 4s all the time. There are some of you that are in stage 4s that are not going to make it. It's just your time to go on and enjoy the journey that you're on because there's a far greater. This is a, a, a touch and go planet. You come down, you land here, you, you, you enjoy the ride a little bit, and then you take off. But this level has to change. We have to bring up this level. And all of us in the natural health field are responsible for this. This planet's decaying rapidly, except for those that are learning the truth. And look at our, look at our YouTube site and all the healings that are going on around the world on fruits, berries, and melons, and botanicals. When you isolate chemistry, that's not healthy. So when you give supplements that are isolates, not good, because now the whole family of bonded chemistry, ratioed chemistry, is disturbed. So where arsenic is a distant cousin, you can start pulling that up forward. You can change the importance of cow-meg relationship. You can change the relationships. And these high-protein diets changes the relationships of phosphorus, which is the little brother, acidic brother, and the two twin alkaline sisters. It changes a lot of these chemical equations in the body. So we don't use supplements here either. We use herbs. Herbs are not for diseases. That's man-made. Herbs are for body tissues and body fluids. Remember, the physical body is only cells and two major fluids. Water, of course, but two major fluids. Who's the two major fluids of the body? Blood and lymph. Well, blood's the kitchen, no question about that. Minor fluid, the lymph, the massive lymph. 
And remember, they just found the lymph system in the brain, the University of Virginia, two years ago. And before that, the glymphatic system was found in the brain, a second lymph system in the brain. They haven't found the base of the spine, the triangled one, the one that goes and feeds the kidneys and, and, and drains. They haven't found those yet. Well, how can you just find these lip vessels? Like they were the researchers at uh, the Virginia, uh, West Virginia, was saying that, um, or the University of Virginia was saying that in, in a cadaver, you can't see them. They have to be an alive person because they're so viscous. You can't see them in death. How interesting that is. You know, the bodies exhibit, when it was around, they never had anything about the lymph system, hardly at all. They had all the, the vascular system out, and they had all the different systems and stuff, but they didn't have the lymph system. This is a, a system that's causing all man's problems, and yet man doesn't even understand this system because no one's helping him. All a path has no clue to this system. You don't have to have academics to understand a sewer system and how it works. I built custom homes all my life, and I put in a lot of new sewer systems in homes. And you've got to understand the sewer system and what it's doing for you. Look at babies who, who you don't change the diaper in a timely manner. Why do they get the burn on the bottom? What's the burn from? Acids. And that's what you have to understand is that you have to eliminate the bulk of the acids out of the human body. But you have to buffer them from the three pH at the cellular level. And this is why you see the lipid side to burn electrolytes. So it's a trip, you guys, when you start finding yourself in the acidic zones, which is full of symptomology. Matter of fact, almost every symptom the allopathic can name is steeped in inflammation or, in a better word, acidosis. Acidosis is the truth of the word, and inflammation is the body's response to that, including cholesterol, calcium, and edema. So when you see cholesterol building up, or calcifications, or edema, what's going on here? Acidosis, stagnation, where you're getting a cationic environment in an environment that should be anionic. And a cationic environment is an acidic environment that causes dehydration, agglomeration, uh, all of those things that show you that things stick together, including cells. And you see that even in a minor way in the blood, when you see blood cells attaching or following each other like choo-choo trains. That's an enzymatic rich uh, uh, lack of diet and also a higher protein diet. We are not high protein species whatsoever. And all the bodybuilders and people we get in here that have suffered, that have pumped high proteins, that now have RA and they've lost their joints. Bodybuilders have blown their rectums. I mean, it's all this because it leaches calcium out of the body. You can go on and on and on of the negative side of proteins. This is why man has biggest problems. We're carbon prints, not nitrogen prints. So the video is to you, Brian, but it's also to the public. And you can negate this all you want, but I have got a rich history, my friend. I have so many successes around the world that you can't even, you can't even come to that. So it's enough to say my advice is that you change your attitude about sugars and you start learning how to detoxify people deeper. This is mean to me, no offense to you, it's just that we hear a lot of things going on over there, and of course, I, I met you once. I attended a, a, a discussion that you gave for the American Diabetes Foundation, and I was giving a talk myself. I went to your talk. You didn't come to mine. And somebody kept hitting me on the back and said, do you believe this guy? And I'm going, no. He said, we don't either. A lot of people don't believe when you say fruits are bad for you, my friend, because they're not. It's misinformation on your part. And I suggest that you change your mind and learn how to take the Hippocrates way up a lot further than what it is because it's stagnating. And so I think that's really about all I think I have to say about fructose. It is the divine sugar of all sugars. We used to call it grape sugar. And all the greats, we all adored it because it is our energy factors. And like I said, it's the only level in a neurological case that you can find your remedies. That's for sure. So I love you all, Brian, I love you too, but you got to wake up with the fructose thing. You're telling people wrong stuff, and we prove this and prove this and prove this. And a little special thing from me and my friends, Brian, get rid of your hitchhiker. Get rid of your hitchhiker and straighten things around there. All right? I love you all. Thank you very much.